when you know you're back in Nashville, you see long beards struck down the road. Oh my god, I just freaking smoked in at 60. I freaking smoked. <laughs> is today the first day of June? It is. So today is June 1st. <clears throat> Drew and I are on a scouting trip in Nashville. Trying to get ready for the August season. And going to a place that I have now, and we've had it for about three years, and it's like a very, very, very sketchy part of town. And every time I come here, well, first off, if you rolled the windows down right now, it would smell like weed. But second off, like every time I come here, I always have some sort of altercation, or not altercation, but, and I've had trail cams stolen here. I've had mineral blocks stolen here. I've had a lot of issues with like the neighbors, but this place is a killer, killer spot. It's a massive funnel. And there's two bucks in here that made it last year that I had late in the year that should be big shooters this year. And they're in here pretty frequently. So I'm trying to get this place dialed. I got a feeder in here, I got mineral sites. I'm gonna put a food plot in and hopefully make this place. It's, it's probably my top spot to try and get it done in that velvet season in August. So we're gonna go in here and kind of freshen stuff up. I mean, you can see it's like a highway. It's a massive funnel. This trail beat down pretty good. So my plan is that when we're like a month out from the season, I'm gonna cut the feeder off, hopefully have a food plot in where they'll transition to the food plot and the minerals. You can hunt over minerals in Nashville as long as it's like 100% salt. Hopefully they stay in here long enough during that season where in three days I can get a shot on one of these bucks. But. Gonna get this thing filled and get out of here. Oh, I gotta do that about 10 more times. This is actually the place that Kendall killed his buck last year in the velvet season. There were, there's a big bachelor group that usually lives like on this hillside right here. There's a, five acre piece of property that we ha had permission on. I have no idea if this is gonna be woods or just a big con construction site come August. So we actually have permission from another house right here and we're setting up a mineral site on this side in case if this place gets destroyed. What technique do you call this? <laughs> the old, the old rear, rear, rear boot kicking <laughs> technique. So right back there is where Drew and I filmed that bachelor group of bucks last night. I've talked to this house here and he's on the fence. I think I can get him to say yes, which would put me closer, but this is the house I've got. And I don't think these bucks feed through their front yards like they do in these other ones, but they have property that goes back on this hillside. What's kind of funny about this place is I knocked on these people's doors um, I guess in like February. And one of the things that she was like, yes to hunting, but she was like, but if you help me get rid of some squirrels, then it's like a, that was pretty much the reason I got permission here was she was like, I have a squirrel problem. I was like, all right, well, I'll help you get rid of some squirrels if you let me deer hunt. And so I'm coming back with a pellet gun and I told her I would do this to shoot some of her squirrels. There's literally squirrels running around everywhere. And that's like how I got access to hunt here.
so that's I mean that's the tree it's ideal because it's you can get in and out totally undetected and you're way like it's it's on a rise so you're like you're gonna be way above them they're not gonna smell you you're gonna be so hard so high above them but it's not it's like I, I got nothing with the voice. <laughs> <laughs> I love that out of you. I love that little flare, little I spunk this morning. Me. I've had a food plot in here, obviously, but I've also had a feeder in here. We're gonna get rid of that today, but did you see this trail? I mean, it's a massive trail that's just, they're just pounding. The plan is to get this feeder out of here because uh, you can't bait in Tennessee and it's gotta be gone for 10 days. We have like three weeks until the season starts. So I'm gonna come in here, kind of freshen up our mineral sites, freshen up the cameras, get a stand hung. I wanna leave as little scent in here as I possibly can. Hello. Don't tell Drew. I'm, I'm feeling good about it, dude. I think it can happen here. And that's, this is like, I've, to, I've, I've talked about this before and the last times I've been here, but like, I'm dedicating myself to try and kill a velvet buck in Nashville this year. It's just kind of the next, the next thing, the next goal I want to accomplish. And to be honest with you, I'd rather kill like a 140 or a 150 here than like a 180 back home. It's just, it's you know, I mean, you kind of get it. it's like the next challenge I want to conquer. So I'm, I've put in so much effort. I've, I've probably made 15 trips over the summertime, just back and forth, back and forth, getting this place ready, getting permission to other places. And this is the place I've landed on that's gonna think, I think it'd be my highest percentage. Thank you. We've kind of gotten throwing stuff up to each other down to the science. It's been a minute though. The man's the best. Woo! I mean, still got it. Still got All it. Us. That's official. First set, Honga 2020. Not as qualified as you, but. Oh my god. Ready? Ready. <sighs> God. <laughs> You're downwind to me. <laughs> yeah. That burrito is really hitting me. Are you on? Yeah, I am now. All right. A little bit tired, a little bit sweaty. Overall successful trip in Nashville though. Coming down to it three weeks and we'll be back and hopefully putting something on the ground. That's freaking him right there. That is the buck that I'm after this year in Nashville. I cannot believe what I just saw. Um, I have put in so much effort this entire off season, starting in January. I've probably made 15 or 20 trips up to Nashville, getting new spots, putting in food plots, hanging stands, cameras, just everything, everything, everything. And I've been getting pictures of this group of bucks every now and then. And this is a place that we've had permission years past. And I don't know if the owners are still here, if this property has been bought or what, but I'm about to knock on this door where I, I, I literally just drove here from Atlanta. It's Tuesday before the season, the season opens Friday and I pull in the driveway and they have this clover hillside and the whole bachelor group of bucks is out there. And I just filmed them. And I, it's 
still I'm, I'm still like just so shaky right now because I can't believe I've laid eyes on these deer in person and there's four huge bucks everything rides on this permission right here if the previous owners are still here and I can get a yes it's a done deal if it's a new owner I gotta figure something out try and find out who who bought it Not a good sign. The grass hasn't been mowed in a long time and I think the house is vacant. So I'm thinking that this property has been sold to a developer, which complicates things. Oh man, <clears throat> I gotta call Drew. Yeah. I need to find out who owns this now because I'm telling you right now, any one of these three trees I'm looking at right now, game over. And I don't, it's not looking good. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think a developer is going to be, especially if it's the one that's tried to run us off. I don't think he's going to be open to it. What I've been able to find since last night or yesterday afternoon, um, cause the property owner does not live there. I've been able to find the property owner's son who we've dealt with in the past, as far as like, you know, the insurance permission, all that kind of stuff that, that they wanted to see. And I've found his office. Um, I've found his cell phone number and I've also found his home address. So I'm going to start the office, go in and have a conversation with him, um, hoping and praying that we can get a yes again. So not his office, but step closer in the right direction. Um, found the actual address to his office. It's about 15 minutes away. So I'm headed there now and uh, hopefully he's there. Uh, well, more bad news. The next address it took me to for his office uh, looks totally abandoned. I've driven from south side of Nashville to north side of Nashville to west side of Nashville, and now I'm going to the east side of Nashville trying to find this office. The chase continues. He's not here. He's at his house. I know where he lives. Holy cow. So it's been a, a little bit of a rodeo, but I'm closing in on him. <laughs> he can't get away from me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. If you have good hunting land out there, let it be known. I will find you. I'll also say this is probably a good time to plug this. We're coming out with a master class. It'll be available on our website where, because we get asked this all the time of like, you know, what did I say to that guy just now in there? People are like, what's your language? What are you saying? And it's honestly taken me 14 years to develop that language of what I say, when I say it, my approach, things like that. And I, I for a long time, refused to give that information away because it's, I mean, literally 14 years for me to master. And I was like, I told Drew, I was like, maybe I'll write a book about it one day or something, but... We decided to do a master class. We did a podcast. I tell everyone, basically spill all the beans about my approach, everything I'm saying. Um, so if it's not out by the time y'all are seeing this video, it is coming. And we basically tell you everything that we've learned over the last 14 years of how to pursue these deer, how to get permission, everything. So be on the lookout for that. And I'm hoping that all the things I've learned over the last 14 years comes together for this last conversation because if it works, if, if I can get the access, I think that I can get this deer on the ground. So, All right, here we go. Pulling up to the house right now. They know that I'm coming, which I think is a very good sign. Fingers crossed. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. an idiot right now but I don't care I just got a yes and it's game freaking on uh, I sat down and spoke with him for probably 30 minutes I think my camera even shut off it I mean it took everything I had in me just just 
all the stops, everything, all the language, every, I mean, just sweet talking and sweet talking and begging and pleading. And I got permission for the three day early season. Dude, I, I don't even know where to begin. It's been, I went to six different places. Was he basically like, if you'll go away and stop talking to me, I'll give you permission? <laughs> I, maybe I might've annoyed him enough to where he finally said yes, but no, dude, I just, I mean, everything we talked about in the master class. I mean, it's, it's just painting the right picture for them and it's a no brainer once you do that. And so I think also like letting him know how much it means to me. I kind of just yelled at the camera for a second when I got out cause I was so pumped. <laughs> so I'm racing over there now and I, now I got to decide whether I want to hang a stand or whether I want to pop in a ground blind. All right, so here's the plan. I just got off the phone with Drew and kind of talked this over. This tree right here is the most ideal tree to get in for hanging a stand. This whole clover patch back here is what they're just funneling out of this really thick kind of bottom area. They're funneling out into and feeding on. My only concern is they lay up on these hillsides on both sides and deer are notorious for bedding in places where they can see where they're about to go feed. Just keeping an eye on it, it's kind of an instinctual thing for them. So my concern is if I do that, that they will see me get in the stand. My other option, which I'm gonna put a ground blind up and just see what it looks like, is I think I could tuck a ground blind up against this wall, probably use some of, these, some of this piping right here and really kind of blended in pretty good. And what these deer did yesterday, they came out and they kind of worked through, there's this funnel in the front yard and kept feeding through this kind of overgrown grass field back behind me. And so if I put a ground blind there, I would be able to get in and out totally undetected, um, which is really, really important. And I think, think that if I hunted it enough that they would come out and kind of wander past me at some point and give me a good shot out of the, out of the ground blind. But I'm going to hang the stand first and then probably pop the ground blind up and just see what it looks like and kind of make a decision whether um, I go with the ground blind or go with the tree stand. So, All right, we've hung all the Novixes that we got, but I got the Lone Wolf that we used a lot last year. And we have a, we have a discount for all the uh, the Novix line of stands, 15% discounts. We'll put that in the bio of this video, but I got a jumbled mess of crap in my truck. That's what happens when you pack a ton of stuff. believe I'm saying this but it is deer season and I just pulled up to the spot that I got permission at my plan is to hunt the ground blind because I can get in and out totally undetected and we're supposed to have some really kind of crappy weather coming in and so being a ground blind I can hunt as long as I need to and I might do some all-day sits but I wanted to kick off the season with a quick quick prayer and then hopefully go smack a big one um, Lord, thank you for bringing us to another deer season. I'm so thankful for the passion that you've given us, the sheer brotherhood of all our guys here. And I just pray that no matter what comes this season, uh, whether it's through successes or failures, that we uh, shine a light for you. That is not what you want to see when you're trying to hunt. I don't know who this dude is, but someone just pulled down the driveway in a big diesel truck and he's just sitting there. Well, another work truck just pulled up. It looks like it's a landscaping crew and they're probably about to absolutely mow down this yard which sucks because it's really overgrown right now and I think that's why the deer liked it so much. But if they're gonna get in here and chop all this stuff up, I'm gonna get out of this blind and end my morning hunt. 
no deer seen, but it's just one of those places. They haven't been here the last couple of nights, but it's one of those places like when they're in this area, they come here. So I know they're probably making their rounds, making their rounds, and hopefully over the next three days, they'll kind of make a lap through here and come in front of us. So just gotta stick it out. It sounds like they're unloading their equipment now, so I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> Alright, another uh, side update. I just got in the car because uh, I thought my hunt was ruined from the landscaping crew being here mowing all the yards. But Drew's got a camera up on the hill and as I was saying in the blind, like these deer are here, then they're gone, they make their laps, they come back. He got pictures this morning at 545 of the group of bucks on the hillside right here. So they're here. They're probably bedded down right inside on this hillside over here. So I'm going to Go grab a bite, quick bite to eat. I'm gonna let this landscape landscaping crew do their thing, and I'm gonna get back in the blind. And I'm gonna sit here all day. We have a storm coming in this afternoon, and I'm hopeful that these deer are gonna get on their feet and come in and feed before that storm storm rolls in. So, scratch that. Another freaking update. I'm getting back in the blind right now because the bucks are bedded down on the hillside. I told you about. I was pulling out, and I can see them. I'm gonna get a different lens on and zoom in on them. Bedded right on that hillside. The other buck. I don't know if you can see that just past embedded down in there. I'm turning around right now and getting back in the blind. I'm gonna let these dudes mow and I will sit here all day. And just so we're clear, those bucks are bedded up on that hilltop over there, probably 150 yards away. Sit here all day. I have yeah, I, I have some on. snacks. I have water. I told you, piece delivery man, come right to the ground blind. Oh man, dude, I, uh, I'm sh like I, I was just trying to get my my bow, my bag, and stuff back in the blind. I was shaking so bad, I was like in a panic. Yeah. But I mean, dude, I could I could see them clearing out, and these deer just like getting up. They're gonna get up and feed at some point. So the, the forecast. I think is in my favor because like dude there's a storm coming and it's going to be raining this afternoon 100 percent gonna be raining this afternoon so that's why i'm yeah, thinking they're, they're gonna they're gonna get up and feed you may be right they might be out there early i think they could be man i, well, I pulled up here at five o'clock the other day and they were out and they're they had been out they're, they're gonna come out there and feed that's for sure they are coming yeah. there's no doubt The uh, radar looks horrible, and there's like, I don't know if it's just storm sirens or tornado sirens are going off all around me, but I got my blind sort of cinched down. I'm going to get in the truck and kind of ride this storm out, and then probably get back in as soon as it lightens up. They're going to they're gonna come out in that field tonight, guaranteed. Well, it's, it, dude, it just, just it depends on the weather. Typically, it's 100%. Once, once this blows through, it should be good. I was looking at my radar, or when rain it was saying like 80 or 90 percent at like seven really yeah. last time i checked it it was done at, at four o'clock well if that does if that happens then that's going to be freaking money are you just going to stay up there yeah i mean i'm running to grab a sandwich real quick i'm just going to sit in my car and kind of play this thing out and go back and get, get back in the blind yeah. okay. y'all are going to be able to see this or not on this camera but the group of bucks is just just on the other side of that edge right there they're just 10 20 yards in the wood line
I see them all, all the big ones, all the big bucks. Please, Lord, come this way. Dear, it looks like they're going back up in the woods. I can, I, I can still barely see them. They're either back going back in the woods or they're going to keep beating behind the house. Oh my god, I just freaking smoked him at 60. I freaking smoked. <laughs> oh my god, get this camera off. <laughs> oh my god. Y'all are going to make fun of me for this one, boys. I'm sorry, this one just means a lot to me. <sighs> I can't believe these deer make me do this. <sighs> That's the farthest shot I've ever made on a deer in my life. <sighs> oh, let me get my, let me get my what's about. Let me stop crying. <clears throat> I've prayed so hard for this, guys. And I've worked so hard this off season. I said it a thousand times, I dedicated myself to get a velvet buck. 
I just 10 ringed them boys, 12 ringed them, whatever it's called. I've messed up on that before. There's a, it's a no doubter, a no doubter, 62 yards. And when they first came in, it's, it's, I don't even know what time it is, four o'clock in the afternoon. I sat here all day. I got in the stand at five, in the blind at 5.30 this morning and sat all day. And it's been a freaking fiasco of a story from the landscapers to seeing them bedded down as I was leaving to having them come in. And I, I had them at like just under 60 yards in the field. And I, I came, I, I just, I was shaking so bad. I was shaking so bad I couldn't do it. I just could not do it. And I, I didn't take the shot. I was trying to be patient. I was thinking they were gonna come in closer. They never did. They went behind trees back over here and they were gonna go back behind the house. Like they, they either go this way in the front of the house or that way around the back of the house. And he was going like he was just gonna go away and he turned back around and stopped and I ranged him at 60 and he was standing perfectly broadside and I told myself if he'll stand there for a split second I'm gonna take a shot if I can get settled on him and I, I came to draw and settled and settled and settled and I freaking smoked him I could not be more thrilled in my life yes! all right I gotta call the boys this is my favorite part I was so overwhelmed by the time the shot happened and to see it hit where it hit, I came unglued. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. 60, 62 yards. Shut up. I swear, it's the furthest I've ever shot serious? a deer. Yes. It's hand. It's the Dude, furthest just, I've ever shot a deer. I was thinking like, all right, they should be about 50 by now. Okay, they should be about 40 by now. All right. 60, 62 yards. Head, I was like, just wait till they're 30. I've never had an arrow lob that like just be in the air that long before it hit oh, the deer yeah. so it, my, my first initial reaction was like oh crap i missed but then it was like right after that thought went through my head the next one was like Tush! just crushed him you freaking kidding me yep 62 yards 62 yards cried like a little girl so what's the deal i'm waiting on drew and kendall and uh thomas to get over here that's what they call the reinforcements <laughs> Unfortunately, during the recovery, we had a card malfunction and all the recovery footage from the main camera was lost. Fortunately though, with a well-placed shot, the buck only ran about 40 yards and died just inside the wood line. Even though the moment wasn't captured on camera, the elation of walking up on a buck I poured my soul into will forever be in my memory. Honestly, this was a welcome reminder that we hunt to fulfill a passion that burns inside of us, whether or not it's captured and shared for the world to see. Three years ago, we set out to replicate what we've done in Atlanta in a new city, and it's proven to be very difficult, but the hard work finally paid off and how sweet it has been. A lot has changed for us in the last three years, and if there's anything that we've learned, it's to chase your dreams, trust in the Lord, and never look back. Ready? Yep. Drag. Come on, pull, pull, pull. Come on, pull, baby. The ribs are stuck. <laughs> Your truck bed's too small. I know, I got too much stuff. Yeah. This deer is a big body. Opening day on the board. We ain't done yet. We got more to do here in Nashville, but all I gotta say is thank you, Lord. Any lemonade? No. <laughs> sure you yeah, don't I'll, want any lemonade? Yeah, I'll take a swig. Hundred dollars right now. No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's just lemonade, man. <laughs>